Hello my friends, today we are gonna design a booking app using React and CSS. This is the home page, we will have some lists, and here we are gonna have an awesome search bar. I will write the destination, I can choose any date range here, and other options. When I click this search button, the result page shows up, and I can change my search inputs or add other options. Let's choose any hotel here. And this is the single hotel page. We can see its details. And finally, we are gonna create this awesome gallery without using any library. It's a decent project to improve your design skills. And in the next video, we are gonna create a backend server and we will fetch all these data from ADB. By the way, let me know which backend technology you'd like to see for this application in the next tutorial. I'm gonna check your comments. Okay, if you are ready, let's get started. Okay, if you created your folder, let's create a React app. To do that, of course, you can write here npx create React app. But if you do that, it's gonna create many unnecessary files here like icons, CSS files, test files. To prevent this, we are gonna use our GitHub repository. If you visit this page, you can find here the minimal version of React, as you can see, and we are gonna clone this branch. To do that, let's come here and copy this URL. And after that, I'm gonna say git clone but we are gonna clone only one branch so I will say single branch and I'm gonna write my branch name which is react mini and I'm gonna paste my URL here and finally I want to download everything in this folder to do that I'm gonna say dot and enter as you can see all those files are here but we don't have our libraries to install them you can write npm install or if you are using yarn just write here yarn and that's all as you can see our library is here so let's start our application i will say yarn start or npm start and that's all let me zoom in okay perfect as you can see it's only one text here which is hello world and all folders are pretty clean so we can get started. Firstly, what I want to do is creating React router DOM. That's because we are going to have multiple pages. We are going to have home page, hotel page, and each individual hotels. To do that, we are going to use React router DOM. Let's install this library. I'm going to copy. So let's create another terminal here, and I'm going to say yarn add or npm install React router DOM. Let's see how we can use it. As you can see, we should import those components. And after that, we are going to create this router wrapper. And inside, we can create our routes. Let's do that. I'm going to import them. And inside, let's create our routes. First one will be our home page. I will say root and path will be home page. And here I'm going to include my element and it's going to be my home component. Of course, we don't have yet. Let's create. I'm going to come here and create new folder. It's going to be pages. And first one will be home page. And inside this folder, I'm going to create my JS file. I will say home.js or JSX, whatever you use. And I'm going to create my function. Let's use it here. I'm gonna say home and I'm gonna import my component and that's all. Let's close this route and let's see. I'm gonna save and as you can see we are in the home page right now. Let's create other routes. To do that firstly I'm gonna create my other pages. It's gonna be list. Let's create our JS file. It's gonna be list.jsx and I'm gonna create my function. Okay, I'm gonna create another route here and it's gonna be, let's say, hotels. When we visit this page, we are gonna see our list item. 
like that. Let's try. I'm gonna say hotels and as you can see list is here. Perfect. Let's create another one and it's gonna be our single hotel page. You can say single or just maybe hotel. I'm not good at naming these files or class names so you can give better ones. <laughs> so let's say hotel.js and this one will be hotels but this time I'm gonna give an ID it's gonna be the unique ID of the hotel so let's say here hotel and whenever I write here any ID as you can see we are gonna see this page and after this tutorial of course we are gonna fetch data from any DB and according to its unique ID here we are gonna fetch our items but for now for the design part it can stay like that so let's get started with the home page I'm gonna shrink here and I'm gonna create my style file of course if you are not a beginner if you want to use styled components or SAS or any other UI libraries you can use them but I want to make this tutorial for beginners as much as possible so I'm gonna create a CSS file so I will say home.css let's import this file instead of react I will say home.css we are not using react that because after react 17 we don't need that so I'm gonna open home page by the way we can close them okay firstly let's create a navbar here it's gonna be similar to booking.com as you can see we are gonna add this navbar and this part can be our header with this search button and we are gonna add this component maybe those these and this hotel list but anyway let's get started with this navbar I'm gonna close here and I'm gonna create components here components and uh, first one will be navbar and inside quickly navbar jsx and css oops it should be inside this folder okay let's close our sidebar and I'm gonna create my function let's import navbar.css and I'm gonna use this component in my home page let's say navbar and let's see okay perfect it's here firstly I'm gonna give a class name for this navbar it's gonna be just navbar and inside I'm gonna create a container it's gonna be now container and first thing I'm gonna add is my logo let's say span and logo and it's gonna be llama booking and the second one is our navbar items which are login and register buttons to do that I'm gonna create new div it's gonna be now items and we are gonna have two buttons here button and now button and first one will be register I'm gonna create one more and it's gonna be login like that okay let's give some style I'm gonna open CSS and for the navbar I'm gonna give a height first let's say 50 pixels and I'm gonna give a background color it's gonna be this blue color let's see okay let's center everything here to do that we are gonna use display flex and just five content center like that but as you remember we have a container here now container so we can give any width for this container so I will say now container and I'm gonna say width a hundred percent so it's gonna cover all these navbar class name but I want to give some limit for that I will say max width and it's gonna be 1024 like that let me give some background color and you can see better I'll say red and as you can see its maximum width is 1024 that because if you are using a laptop or any small screen it's gonna look like this as you can see it's full screen right now but if you are using a monitor or any big screen we are gonna limit its width like that 
let me zoom in so if you are using a small screen you can see better and i'm gonna delay it here and i'm gonna give a font color here and it's gonna be white as you can see our logo is white right now and let's take care of our logo i'm just gonna increase font weight it's gonna be a little bit thicker like that and let's make this container horizontal i will say display flex like that let's center them vertically align item center like that and i'm gonna separate them i wanna move the second item in the end of the container so i will say justify content space between like that perfect what about those buttons let's check okay class name i'm gonna copy this Firstly, I'm going to give some margin between them, let's say 20, and I want to delete border, it's going to be none, like that. I can give some padding, and I can change maybe this text color, let's say padding 5 pixels from top and bottom, 10 pixels from left and right, and I'll say cursor pointer, and finally, font color will be our blue color like that so let's create another component here i'm gonna open my sidebar and inside components i will say header and inside let's create js and css file header and css okay let's create function and import css file and its class name will be header let's use it under navbar I will say header and it's here firstly i'm gonna create here a header list it's gonna include hotels flights or any other options by the way let's close everything here and open up again okay so i will say header list and inside this list we are gonna have some items let's say header list item and inside we are gonna have an icon and text for icons, you can download any image and use it here, or you can use Material UI icons, but I want to show you something different. I'm trying to teach you different options in every tutorial, so we are gonna use Font Awesome. Okay, it's an awesome library that we can use any free or premium icons. Let's say, for example, Hotel. As you can see, for example, we can use this one. If you are using HTML, you can directly add its JavaScript file and use it like that. But if you are using React, you are going to need some libraries. Let's come here. And for React, and we are going to need this core package. If you are using Campion, just copy here. If you are using Yarn, copy here. And I'm going to paste it. It's going to install. And after that, we are going to add our icon packages. Of course, we are not going to use premium, we are going to use for free. Let's copy them and paste. And finally, as you can see, it's for pro version. And lastly, we are going to use this component. To do that, we are going to install this library. There are a lot of libraries. <laughs> okay, let's search for it again. It was bad. Okay, this one. I'm gonna come here and copy this one and let's check whether it works or not of course we are gonna need to import this let's see okay we cannot see it that because we should import our icon also like this as you can see we are gonna import it and use it like that let's do that instead of this text i will say fa and bet and let's see okay perfect it's here and next to this icon i'm gonna add here a span and it's gonna be stays and i'm gonna add other items also i can just copy and paste you don't have to waste time as you can see plane icon flights car icon car rentals and finally taxi like that let's give some style for them i will say header css and I'm gonna take this here and let's get started with header 
I'm going to say background color is going to be our main color and font color will be white. And again, it's going to be display flags, just white content center. And we are going to do the same thing. Remember, we are creating here a container. Let's say header container. And I'm going to wrap them like that. And I will say header container. And again, 100%. But maximum width will be 10, 24. Okay, it starts from here. Let's give some padding from top and bottom. We can do it in just one line. To do that, I'm going to use margin from top, from left, bottom. It's going to be a little bit bigger. And finally, right. Left and right will be zero. Like that. So let's make this list display flags. So they can be horizontal. I'll say display flags. I can give some gap between them, so I will say gap, let's say 40, for example. Okay, perfect. And for each item, I can do the same thing, flexbox and gap between this icon and text. What was the name of this class name? Header list item. I'm gonna come here, quickly display flags, align item center, and gap will be 10 pixels. Oops, gap. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is adding additional class name for this first one. So it's gonna be active, so we can give some border. Let's come here and say active. And I will say if it's active, give some border. It's gonna be one pixel, solid, and white. I'm gonna give some padding. Oops, it's not here, that's because I didn't save here. Okay, perfect. Let's give some border radius. It's going to be 20 pixels, and that's all. It looks pretty good. And I'm going to add here a title, description, and button. After this list view, I'm going to come and say header title. It's going to be exactly the same text in booking.com. Let's say p tag, and it's going to be description, header description, and finally a button. It's going to be button header button like that sign in or register okay let's give some style for this description maybe i can give some margin header description i will say margin 20 from top and bottom but zero from left and right like that maybe some margin here i will say margin bottom and what about this button let's copy this class name Firstly, I'm going to say background color is going to be this blue color and font color will be white. And I'm going to delete this border and I'm going to give some padding inside and maybe font weight a little bit thicker. Border none and padding 10 pixels. And finally, let's say cursor pointer. So we can click like that. It looks pretty nice. And finally, we can handle one of the most important part, and it's going to be our search bar. So I'm going to create another div here, and it's going to be header search. Let's check again booking.com. As you can see, it's in the middle of the header component, and it's going to ask our destination and check-in button here, and we are going to have some options. And finally, we are going to have a button here. Of course, it's going to be a little bit different, but the main component is like that. Let's do that. I will say header search item. And first item will be our input. Of course, we are going to need an icon. And it's going to be, again, this bad icon. Because we are going to search for any hotels. And after that, I'm going to say input. It's going to be text. I'm going to give some placeholder. And it's going to be where are you going? And let's give class name maybe, header search input. I'm going to close here for now, so we can see better. And we are going to have two more, one, two. And this is going to be calendar icon, calendar days. And it's not going to be an input. Instead, I'm going to put here a span. I'll say span, and we are going to add some date, check-in date to Check out date. Of course, it's going to be dynamic, but we are going to handle that later. And I will say class name, header search, and text. 
and I'm gonna do the same thing for other item it's gonna be span but this time it's gonna be two adults two children and one room again we are gonna change it but for now it's okay and this icon will be person icon let's see okay as you can see input our dates and options let's take care of this search bar i'm gonna open again my css file and i will say header search and i'm gonna give a height first background color will be white and i'm gonna give a border and it was yellow remember i will say three pixels solid and this yellow color and of course it's gonna be horizontal display flags align item center like that and i'm gonna give justify content it's gonna be space between or around let's try around it looks weird that because we don't have any button yet but when we add this it's gonna be better and by the way we cannot see our icons let's give class name okay we already have i'm gonna use it and it's gonna be color light gray like that okay let's give some padding inside this search component padding 10 and from right and left and i'm gonna give some border radius and it's gonna be five pixels but how i'm gonna center this here of course we are gonna use positioning here and it's gonna be position absolute and i'm gonna give any position here to do that we are gonna use bottom it's gonna start from in the middle of this line to do that we are gonna use its height remember its height is 30 pixels but we should consider this padding also in total it's 50 pixels if i say bottom minus 25 pixels it's gonna start from here but as you can see there is a mistake here that because we didn't give relative positioning for the parent so i will come here and for this header i'm gonna say position relative as soon as we do that as you can see it's in the middle right now perfect and by the way i can give some width for this search button search bar i'm gonna say width a hundred percent and maximum width of course by the way let's create our button also i'm gonna come here and another item and here we don't need any icon only thing we should do is writing here a button it's gonna be header button and i will say search like that okay it looks much better so let's take care of our items search item i'm gonna make this display flex align item center and i'm gonna give gap between this icons and other items like this input okay perfect so what about this icon header search input and it's gonna be border none we don't need any border and also i'm gonna delete this outline so even if i click here we are not gonna see any border or outline so what about spans remember header search text i'm gonna say color light gray and i will say cursor pointer like that so when i click on this span we are gonna see here our date option to do that we are gonna use a library and it's gonna be react date range it's a pretty popular react library so we are gonna use it let's check this demo as you can see we can choose any date range here and also we can change our ui like this or this one as you can see it's minimal version let's use this of course we are going to import our library first so i'm going to come here yarn at react date range and after that we are going to import this component and use it like that let's check here view code and as you can see firstly we are going to need a starting date and ending date and we are going to pass it as a prop here let's import first and you are going to understand better i'm going to import and uh, firstly i'm going to create a use state as you can see it takes new date which represents the current time and ending date will be null and after that we are going to pass it here let's copy this i'm going to paste here of course we can change its name i will say date and set date i'm going to import use state 
and we are going to use this component and after this span i'm going to paste it here and it's going to be set date as you can see our event is ready whenever we change any date it's going to directly update our date and this prop will be just date let's see okay there's a problem here that because we need one more library i forgot that it's going to be yarn add and date f and s and by the way we have to import those css files otherwise we are not going to see this ui so i'm going to come here and paste it like that okay perfect as you can see this is the beginning time and we can choose any date range here of course we are going to handle this style to do that i'm going to give class name here and it's going to be let's say just date i'm going to come here and what i'm going to do is giving an absolute positioning in this case it's going to start from here i will say position absolute and if i say top zero as you can see it starts from here but if i say 50 pixels it's gonna be much better okay right now instead of date to date let's give our actual date here it's gonna be 20th of april to whatever we choose here of course at the beginning remember it was null if we do that it's gonna be an error to prevent this instead of null i can create new date here also in this case we can use those dates of course their type is javascript date to transform them into readable strings we can use format function of date f and s let's say format of course from and let's copy this and here i'm gonna say format date and uh, first item that because remember it's an array and this object in this array so we are gonna write zero and start date and i'm gonna write here which type i want to see it it's gonna be month and then days and uh, finally years you can change it for yourself or your country and after that i'm gonna say two and i will do the same thing for ending date i'm gonna copy here let's paste and it's gonna be and date like that let's see april 20 2022 20, but if i change here as you can see it's changing perfect but there's a problem here when we open our application we shouldn't see this component to prevent this i'm gonna create one more use date here and that's right here i'll say const open date and set open date it's gonna be use state and at the beginning it's gonna be false we are not gonna see it so we can write here our condition i'm gonna wrap this and i will say open date is true like that it's gonna be false so we are not gonna see it but whenever i click on this pen we are gonna change our state i will say on click method and i will say set open date and it's gonna be the opposite of open date if it's true it's gonna be false if it's false it's gonna be true let's try i'm clicking and it's here clicking back and it's gone perfect it works so we are gonna do a similar thing here we are gonna create here a component and we will be able to increase adults children or room number i'm gonna come here and it's gonna be open let's say options set open options and again it's going to be false and let's say const options set options and it's going to be use state and i'm going to give here my variables first one will be adult it's going to be one let's say children is going to be zero at the beginning and room number will be so let's use them again instead of this text i can use my state right now i'm gonna say options dot adult adult and i'm gonna write here a separator it's gonna be dot and options dot children will be children and finally options dot room will be room 
let's see how it looks okay this is undefined okay there is a typo here okay perfect our state is here so when i click here i'm going to open new component let's write after this span and i'm going to create new div here i will say options and we are going to have three items let's say option or option item and firstly we are going to create here a span i will say option text and first one will be adult okay we have text right now and i can add increase and decrease buttons let's say button option corner button and first one will be minus and one more is going to be plus and um, in the middle of them i'm going to create another span and it's going to be our number option counter and number let's say one let's see okay it's here of course we cannot see because it's white but as you can see it's here adult our buttons and one is here perfect so i will do the same thing for others i'm going to create two more items and it's going to be children at the beginning it's going to be zero and true it's going to be one let's put them somewhere here again it's going to be position absolute actually i'm going to open this here okay let's come here and firstly we are going to have our main div options and i'm going to say position absolute and again top 50 i will give background color it's going to be white but text color will be gray I will give some padding and border radius. Border radius will be 5 pixels. If you want to, you can give any border, like 1 pixel solid and gray. Or if you want to, you can give any box shadow. If you want to create your own box shadow, you can Google box shadow generator. And after that, you are going to see how easy to create that. Okay, perfect. So for each item, let's give some width, maybe. Option item. I will say 200 pixels like that i will say display flags and i'm gonna separate them just for content space between and i will give some margin or if you want you can give some padding for this main container doesn't matter but it looks a little bit strange that because we forgot wrapping this component with another container let's do that for this minus button number and plus button i'm gonna create one more div and it's gonna be option counter I'm going to wrap them and I'm going to do the same thing for other items this one and this one okay it looks awesome so let's take care of this I'm going to copy this class name and I will say display flags align item center and I'm going to give some space it's going to be gap 10 pixels like that and i can decrease this font size it's really big let's say 12 and let's change this color it's going to be black okay perfect and those buttons let's copy this i'm going to give some width and height i'm going to give some border one pixel solid and our blue color and also text color will be the same and i will say cursor pointer like that maybe background color white it's gray right now it's gonna be white okay but how i'm gonna change them when i click them those buttons nothing is changing let's close here and i'm gonna say on click event here i'm gonna create a new function handle option for example and I'm going to pass inside my variable name, which is adult. And it's going to be negative or decrease or just D. And I'm going to do the same thing for other buttons. This time it's going to be increase children. Again, increase. And of course, children. And finally, group. and increase of course if you don't want to write them again and again you can create your new component and you can pass this div in that component 
but I'm not gonna do that. It's just two items. Let's create our function here. I will say const handle option and it's gonna get our name, adult children or room and operation increasing or decreasing. And I'm gonna set my state, set options, and I'm gonna take my previous state and I'm gonna return the previous state and I'm gonna write their name. In this case, if you write them inside an array, it's gonna find their name inside our object here. Of course, we are gonna need a condition here. I will say if operation equals increase, we are gonna increase this number. It's gonna be options name. In this case, it's gonna find our object value here. And we are gonna increase it plus one. Otherwise, it's gonna be minus one. If you don't feel confident about JavaScript, it might be confusing for you. If you are confused, just search for JavaScript objects and get more information. But I'm gonna explain one more time. I hope you'll understand. Let's say adult is one, children zero, room is one. So whenever I click this button, for example, only adult, it's gonna run this function and it's gonna set our options. It's gonna take the previous state, which is adult one, children zero, room one. It's not gonna change anything. It's gonna be exactly the same object. And after that, it's gonna find our name. It was adult. In this case, it's gonna change this one and it's gonna check our operation. If it's increase, it's gonna find our property value, which is one, and it's gonna add one. If it's decrease, it's gonna do exactly the same thing, but this time it's gonna decrease its number. It works like that. Let's try. I'm gonna come here and click, and as you can see, it's two right now. Let's click here. Perfect, it works. But this one is not changing. That because we just gave numbers here, instead we are gonna say options.adult options.children and true here. Okay, perfect. But there's a problem here. As you can see, I can go under zero. To prevent this, we can give disabled attribute for our buttons. What do I mean by that? Let's come here for this decrease button. I'm gonna say disabled, but if options dot adult smaller than or equal one. In this case, if it's one, I'm not able to click here anymore. I'm trying, as you can see, it's not working anymore. Perfect. I can do the same thing for others. I wrote here one that because it should be at least one adult. And for children, It can be zero and for room again it's gonna be one of course we can give a style for this disabled attribute i'm gonna open my css uh, for this button i will say if it's disabled change the cursor and it's gonna be not allowed and as you can see there's a not allowed sign here and I cannot click. And here, one, zero and disabled. Of course, it was minus four because I didn't refresh my page. If I do that, as you can see, one and I cannot click. Perfect. But we are not supposed to see this component. And again, we are gonna use open state here. I will come here and for this options, let's cover this div. And I'm gonna say, if it's open, you can show it. If it's not, it's gonna be closed. And for this span, I'm gonna write on click method. And it's gonna update our state, set options, sorry, set open options. And it's gonna be the opposite of open options. I'm clicking and it's here clicking again and go. Perfect, it works. So we finished our header, of course, in hotels page. Let's come here and say hotels. I'm gonna import this navbar and header again. Let's open up list and I will say navbar 
and header. Why it didn't import this? Okay, interesting. <laughs> Let's import like that. But in this case, if we are in this list, I don't want to see this search bar or those texts. It's going to be only this list. How we are going to do this? It's really easy. I can give here a prop. I will say type and it's going to be list. And we are going to check its type. If it's list, we are going to delete those components. Let's come here. I'm going to take type and here from this h1 to last item here i'm gonna wrap them and i'm gonna write my condition but before of course we cannot use them like that you should use any parent div or react fragments like that i'm gonna open it here and close here and i will say if type is not list If it's home page, we are going to see them. If it's not, we are going to see like that. Of course, this padding is too much. If you use styled components or something like that, it's really easy to handle. But if you are using CSS, basically, you can give here any condition for this container. Because remember, in our container, we have this margin. But we are going to have a condition here. I'm going to say, if type is list it's gonna be header container but list mode if it's not it's gonna be just header container right now i can arrange my other style here so i will say header container and if it's list mode i'm gonna delete this margin bottom and it's gonna be zero like that perfect if i go to home page it's going to be this big one. Awesome. Of course, you can use any inner style here also. You can say style and margin and other things. But it's easier, I think, using class name. And that's all. We finished our header. Let's create some lists. So let's close everything here and I'm going to open my home page. And here, after header, I'm going to write home container. That's because we are going to have multiple lists. Uh, first list will be city list. As you can see, there are some cities here. Maybe we can create this one, this one, and one more. Let's see what we can do. By the way, I'm going to close here. And I'm going to create one more component. And it's going to be featured cities or just featured. CSS and I'm going to import my CSS. I'm going to save here and I'm going to add my component here like that. And it's here. And again, I can center this. To do that, I'm going to open home CSS and here I will say home container. Firstly, I'm going to give margin top. And I will say display flex. It's going to be flex direction column. That because all those components will be vertical. And I will say align item center. And I'm going to give some gap. Like that. So if I create another list. It's going to be a space. But we don't have home container. Oh, okay. Uppercase. Like that. Okay. Perfect. Let's delete this last one. And I can close here. And my sidebar. And let's create our lists. I will say class name is going to be featured. And we are going to have, let's say, three items. Featured item. And we are going to have an image. Image. I will just copy and paste from booking.com. Like that. And some titles here. Feature titles. I'm wrapping them. That because I'm going to give position absolute. So we are going to see those titles on this image. So first title will be. Let's say H1 and Dublin. 
and here we are going to have property number let's say any number doesn't matter properties and I'm going to change here it's going to be h2 it's going to be smaller image and those titles will be somewhere here so I'm going to copy and paste my other items I don't want to write them again and again as you can see just city names and their images are different let's see okay perfect let's take care of them i will say featured with 100 percent i'm gonna give max width it's gonna be 10 24 i will save display flex and just file content will be space between i'm gonna separate them and finally i'm gonna give some gap let's say 20 like this of course those images are really big featured image I will just say with 100% and I will say object width is going to be cover so it's going to cover all components like that all this container so let's change those colors and I'm going to make this container position relative that because titles will be absolute so I will say featured item position relative and I can give color here it's going to be white let's give some border radius let's say 10 but if I do that it's not going to work that because it's overflowing this image to prevent this I'm going to write here overflow hidden in this case it's going to be like that by the way I can give some height for this let's say 250 okay perfect so what about titles feature titles position will be absolute let's say bottom 20 like that 20 pixels from bottom and let's say 20 from left left 20 but when i click here as you can see our model is under our images so if i come here and say z index and let's say one and if i go to header and where is our date here i will say z index is going to be bigger than one let's say two and as you can see it's here so i will do the same thing for this component which is options i'm going to copy this and paste here okay perfect there's no problem right now so we finished our first lists let's create other one so let's create something like that we are going to have property type and by the way we can use this title also and i will use those images image and its title and maybe subtitle we are gonna do like that but let's open home page and i'm gonna give a title here let's say home title i'm gonna move this here if i say where is our css home title I will save it 1024 in this case it's going to be here and I will reduce this font size it's going to be just 20 like this let me make this normal zoom it's going to look like this in big screens and something like that in small screens let's create another component but first I'm going to close everything and I will say property list and CSS and JSX REFCE and property list.css okay let's give class name I will say P list and inside let's say P list item it's gonna be our first property and again image P list image I'm gonna copy and paste quickly like that p list titles and again h1 let's say hotels and h2 some number hotels it's exactly the same thing only difference is it's not gonna be position absolute so quickly I'm gonna copy and paste other items if you understood here as you can see apartments results and I'm gonna use it in home page 
after this text I will say property list like that I'm gonna come here and for P list with a hundred percent I will give max width it's exactly the same thing actually I'm not gonna explain this just write content space between and cap will be 20 and for each item P list item again board radius 10 pixels overflow hidden and I will say cursor pointer so we can click them and for each image I'm gonna give some width which is 100% and I'm gonna give height let's say 150 pixels it's gonna be small of course object width cover let's see okay something is wrong with our class name sighting okay they are gonna be uppercase okay perfect of course those titles are really big titles and uh, for h1 i'm gonna say 18 pixels and i'm gonna replicate this and this time it's gonna be h2 and font size will be smaller and i will say font weight 300 it's gonna be thinner like that but there's a problem list item ah okay it's titles but others are title let's correct them like that okay perfect but as you can see all images are not in same size to prevent this for the parent which is item i'm gonna give any width or as we gave here flex box we can use flex i will say flex just one and this time they are gonna be in the same size perfect and the other one is gonna be those items let's copy this title we are gonna have image titles here it's gonna be similar let's see okay and i'm gonna close them and open my home page and again one more title here and it's gonna be this title and one more component here what can we say featured hotels or properties i don't know seriously <laughs> anyway i'm not gonna think about them right now featured properties i'm gonna create my function and here css and i'm gonna pass it here featured properties i'm gonna give class name let's say fp and again i'm gonna write the first one and for others i'm gonna copy paste again let's say fp image i'm gonna copy my source and i'm gonna have three spans here first one will be property name it's gonna be apart hotel miasto and of course it's gonna be span and i'm gonna duplicate this and second one will be st and third one will be price let's say madrid and starting from 120 and one more thing we are gonna need and it's gonna be rating to do that i'm gonna create one more div and let's say rating and i'm gonna add here a button it's gonna be our rating let's say 8.9 it's a pretty high rating by the way <laughs> and span will be excellent and i'm gonna create three more like that copy and paste i didn't change any of them like that okay let's give our styles for the container it's gonna be exactly the same nothing has changed and for each item i will say again flex one and i'm gonna give some gap let's say 10 pixels like that but let's take care of those images and we can see better i will say with a hundred percent so it's gonna cover our item and again i forgot giving here item container let's give i'm doing here really quick because it's similar things and right now it looks pretty good 
this is our hotel name this is city and this is our price but they are in the same line to prevent this i'm gonna make this item display flex and flex direction will be cool like that and for this hotel name let's see fp name i'm just gonna say font weight bolt like that and I'm gonna decrease font weight of this T and increase font weight of this price. So FP T is gonna be font weight 300 and price will be, let's say 500. It's not bold, but thicker than this one. Okay, awesome. So what about this rating? FP rating and for button insight, Remember, it's our number. I'm gonna give a background color. It's gonna be our main color. And font color will be white. Like that. Let's slate these borders and let's give some padding maybe. Border, non padding, three pixels. And I'm gonna give margin right. And I'm gonna separate this button and this text. Okay, maybe font weight bold. Okay, it's better. And let's increase this font size. For this text fp rating and it was a span remember here and i will say font size 14. okay perfect it looks pretty nice and Let's create one more component and it's going to be our email list. I'm going to close them and let's come here for these components and I will say mail list JSX and CSS and my CSS file here. Let's put this inside home page home JSX. After this list, I will say mail list. Let's close here. Okay. I will give class name. It's going to be mail. And I'm going to add here a title h1 mail title. Let's make this uppercase. Let's see here. As you can see, it's going to be our title. And description we are going to have a container here which includes input and button and that's all and after that we are going to create our footer nothing special as you can see we have five lists here and maybe we can create this text so I'm gonna paste this text here and let's say span mail description and a container mail input container and inside an input, let's give placeholder, it's gonna be your email. And a button, it's gonna be subscribe. And let's open our list here. And firstly, I'll say mail. And it's gonna be with 100%, but this time I'm not gonna give any limit, that's because it's gonna be full screen, full width. And I'm gonna give some margin. Oops. Okay, I forgot here my folder. Okay, as you can see, it's full screen. Of course, we are going to center this. But before, let's give our colors. Background color. And text color. And I will say display flags. Flags direction column. They are going to be vertical. And align item center. Let's give some gap between them, like that. Of course, we can give padding. Okay, perfect. And as you can see, it's really small. Let me zoom in again. We can increase this input height. I will take this class name and for input, let's give some bit first. And height will be pixels and I'm gonna give some padding I'm gonna delete border like that 
and let's give some margin here margin right 10 pixels okay what about this button button and height will be 50 background color will be light blue and text color will be white let's increase this font weight like that and again let's lay this border maybe port radius 5 pixels and cursor pointer like that i can give same border radius here for this input okay it looks perfect and one more thing for this home page and it's gonna be footer let's create quickly footer CSS, I'm gonna close here. Function and CSS. Let's give class name. And inside, I'm gonna write a wrapper. Let's say footer lists. It's gonna wrap all lists. Remember, they are horizontal. And for each list, let's say F list li f list item countries i'm gonna duplicate this and change regions cities districts airports and hotels actually you can copy and paste from booking.com don't waste your time but basically i'm gonna create exactly the same list two three four five okay let's open our css but before let's go to home page and call our component here it's gonna be footer like that okay i will say footer hit 100 percent 10 24 i'm gonna decrease font size and for wrapper F lists I'll say display flex and let's say with a hundred percent and I'm gonna separate them like that let's give some margin here maybe that because we are gonna add another text margin bottom 50 and here I will say F text and it's gonna be copyright 2022 and whatever you write Lama booking. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay. But I don't want those dots. We can delete them. F list, I will say list style, and it's gonna be no. But as you realize, there is a default padding here. Let's delete this. I will say padding zero. And for each item, I'm gonna give some margin between them. F list item margin bottom let's say 10 and for font color i'm gonna use my blue color and finally cursor pointer like that perfect as i said you can just copy paste those link names i don't want to waste time you can find the original one in the github repository okay let's zoom out and see and it looks pretty nice and if i zoom in okay perfect so let's create a search list when i click this button we are gonna go to hotels link and here we are gonna see our results to do that i'm gonna open my list and by the way let's create css and i'm gonna import okay let me show you what we are gonna create as you can see we are gonna have a search component here and after that we are gonna create this hotel list i will come here and create my container and inside we will have wrapper and first item will be list search and second will be 
list result. It's going to be our hotel list. Okay, let's take care of this search. Firstly, I will add a title. Let's say list search title, and it's going to be search. Let me put this here, and I will say list container display flags, just by content center, and I'm going to give some margin from here and after that. So let's take this wrapper and I will say 100% and I'm going to give max width and it's going to be display flags and gap will be 20. Let's check here. As you can see, our search component is smaller. Let's say flex one and for this result, flex three. I'm going to come here, flex one, and result will be three. Like that. And I'm going to give a background color for this. It's going to be this yellow color. And firstly, let's create a title. I will say h1, list search, and title. Like that. Let's give some style, font size 20, color will be gray like that, and I'm going to give margin bottom. Okay, let's give a padding for this search component, I will say padding 10, and I'm going to give border radius, let's say 10 pixels. And I'm going to make this position sticky, that because, let's check our example, when I scroll this page as you can see it sticks on top to do that i'm gonna give my position let's say 10 it's gonna stay on the top so let's create our items first one will be destination second one will be this input and third one will be our options and finally we are gonna create this button i will come here and let's say list search item and i'm gonna give a label i will say destination and after that we are going to have input and that's all for now let's create other one again this item this time it's going to be check-in date and instead of input again we are going to use span and we are going to show our date like that but we don't have our destination or this date or any other options that because we didn't handle our search bar here when I click here, nothing is happening. Let's handle that. Open my header. Let's close here, by the way. And what I'm going to do is coming here and writing on click event. I will say handle search. So let's create our function. I'll say const handle search. And I'm going to use React Router DOM navigate to do that. Let's come here and say const navigate. It's going to be use navigate hook here. And right now we can redirect our users to any component, any page, and it's going to be hotels page. And also we can pass any state here. And right now we are able to send our destination, date, and options. By the way, I'm not sure that we create Okay, we didn't create destination. Let's do that quickly. Destination, set destination. And at the beginning, it's going to be an empty string. But whenever I change my input here, we are going to update our state. So I will say on change method, and it's going to be set destination, event, target, and value. Okay, let's send them. Right now we have destination, we have date and options. We can send all of them. Date and options. Okay, perfect. But how we are gonna use them? Let's come here. And again, we are gonna use React Router DOM, but this time we are gonna use location. Location is gonna be use location hook. And let's see what we have inside. I'm going to open my console and let's write here something. I'm going to choose any date here, like that, and I'm going to search. And as you can see, 
we have our state here and all our options so we can use them remember this is location and it's going to be location dot state and after that we will be able to reach them let me zoom in like that okay i'm gonna delay it here and i'm gonna create my states const again destination use state and it's going to be location state dot destination i will do the same thing for others date and options let's change them date set date and options okay in this case i can create my span here and again i'm gonna write my dates let's import format and let's see i'm gonna write again like that and i'm gonna search and it's here perfect we don't have destination let's come here and put placeholder and it's gonna be destination okay awesome let's give some style i'm gonna open css and let's put this here i will say search item and it's gonna be display flex but flex direction will be column and i'm gonna give gap between our items and margin bottom like that so what about those labels search item and label i'm gonna say font size maybe 12 like that smaller and for the input i'm gonna give some height it's gonna be bigger and i'm gonna delete border and finally i'm gonna give a padding inside okay perfect so what about this span i'm gonna duplicate this and this time it's gonna be span and again 30 pixels padding and i'm gonna give background color like that but let's center this display flags align item center and i will say cursor pointer that because when we click this we are going to open our date component let's come here and let's say date range again we are going to create own change method and we are going to take our items and we are going to set date again remember how we are doing this it's going to be item dot selection let me shrink this a little bit and after that i will say minimum date and it's going to be new date so in this case we are not able to choose any previous date did we do the same thing for here or not i don't remember okay we didn't let's do the same thing like that and finally we are going to pass our date like here let's see okay it's here perfect as you can see we cannot choose them why i forgot this in the home page i don't know but anyway <laughs> we fixed and i'm gonna write my condition i will say open date set open date and it's gonna be false at the beginning and i'm gonna write my condition here and it's gonna be if it's open show me date range and I'm gonna write here my on click method. And it's gonna set our state. Set open date, opposite of open date. As you can see, it's close. I'm gonna click and it's here. Perfect. Let's create our options. It's gonna be another list search item. And I'm gonna give my label and it's gonna be options. And after that, we are gonna have a couple of items like that each item will be list search option item so let's create that list search option item and i will say span list search option text and it's going to be minimum price and here i'm going to use small tag and i will say per night let's see okay and after this span finally i can create my input this search option input it's gonna be a number 
like this. Of course, we are going to make this display flex and they're going to be horizontal. But for now, let's create others. Two, three, four, five. And second one will be maximum price. Third one will be adult. Of course, we don't need them anymore. Let's delete them. And second one will be children and room like that and we can give our placeholders that because we already have our values so i will say placeholder and it's going to be options dot adult so i can copy this and for this input and this one children and room like that but again we have a problem I shouldn't go under 1 or 0, it's really easy to handle that. I will just say minimum number will be 1. And for children, minimum will be 0. And for room, again 1. In this case, I'm going to refresh. And right now, I can't go under 1. And here, 0 and 1. Perfect. Let's give our style. I'm gonna come here uh, first one will be option item I'll say display flags justify content space between and I'm gonna give margin bottom for each item and let's change text color it's gonna be this gray color and font size will be a little bit smaller like that of course those inputs are really big option input and it's gonna be let's say 50 okay by the way i can give some padding here for this container it looks i don't know a little bit strange so i can create here a div let's say this item options and i'm gonna wrap my items like that in this case i can use it i'm gonna come here Please search options and I'll say padding time. Okay, it's much better writing. And finally, I'm gonna add my button. Let's come here and inside my container, I'll say button and it's gonna be search. And here, list search and for my button, I'm gonna give padding background color will be our blue color this light blue and text color i'm gonna delete border let's check first okay it's here let's give full width and i'm gonna increase font size sorry font weight so i will say width 100 percent and font weight let's say 500 and finally cursor pointer like that okay perfect so right now I can create my items, but I'm not going to create this inside my component. Instead, let's create another one. I will come here and I'm going to say search item. Search item, JS file and CSS. I'm going to import CSS file. And we can use them here inside results let's say search item and I'm gonna create around eight ten items by the way there is something wrong with my CSS search item there is a typo here okay perfect so let's create our items let's check here as you can see we are going to have a container and we are going to have three sections first one will be image second one will be our description and third one will be our details so let's do that i'm going to close my sidebar and list and this one so firstly i'm going to give class name it's going to be search item and inside Firstly, we are going to have an image. 
search item image and I'm gonna paste my image here I'm sorry for this URL but I just copy and paste from booking it's pretty long but I'm not gonna change it because in the next tutorial we are gonna fetch from our DB so second one will be search item description and details and inside this let's see what we have we have title distance taxi option subtitle other features cancellation option and cancel option subtitle i'm not gonna create them one by one i will just copy and paste there is nothing important here as you can see title distance taxi subtitle everything is here the important part is css i'm gonna save and let's check as you can see our image and other texts and here okay i'm not gonna copy paste them because they are not only text like that so let's give here a text for now and let's take care of our css i'm gonna take this here and firstly our container let's give a border first i will say one pixel solid and it's gonna be light gray like that but i want to take care of this image otherwise it's gonna look really big and we cannot see any other styles so i will say 200 high 200 and object width will be cover okay right now we can see better and for this container i can give some padding and border radius and it's going to be display flex they are going to be horizontal and i can give some gap and finally for each item i'm going to give some margin let's say padding 10 border radius 5 pixels it's going to be flex box justify content will be space between gap and margin bottom that's all perfect so let's take care of our text for description it's our container i will say display flex but flex direction column and some gap like that by the way let's give width for this description and details description will be two times bigger than details so i will say flex 2 and for details it's gonna be flex 1 like that okay let's take care of our title font size 20 and color will be our blue color and for this distance font size will be smaller like that and for this taxi option it's going to be smaller again and i'm going to give a background it's going to be green and font color will be white of course hashtag here like that and as you can see its width is a hundred percent to prevent this i will say width maximum content so its width will be where its content ends like that let's give some padding and radius three pixels and border radius will be five pixels like that awesome and this subtitle i'm gonna choose this font size and font weight will be bold like that so what about those features let's copy this it's going to be only small and cancel option let's see how it looks okay they are green but this one is bolder font size color and font weight will be bold and for the subtitle it's gonna be the same like this let's see okay perfect it's that easy guys so what about these details 
let's come here and firstly we are going to have rating container it's going to be flexbox it's going to contain this span and this button and after that we are going to create another container here and it's going to include price tax option and this button i'm going to close here for now and create my items let's say search item rating uh, first one will be span excellent and second one will be button and it's gonna say our rating and after that another div details texts sorry detail texts and first one will be price price let's say some number here and second one will be includes taxes and fees and i love this option in any e-commerce website <laughs> because when you buy something let's say a hundred dollars you are going to cart and suddenly it's 120 because of this tax <laughs> i hate it okay button and it's gonna be c availability and let's say class name search item check button so let's give some style search item css and i'm gonna say ratings it's gonna be display flex justify content space between and for span insight let me actually take this here so you can see better as you can see we have span and button and for span i'm gonna say font weight 500 and for button i'm gonna give a background color it's gonna be blue color will be white and i'm gonna give some padding inside and font weight will be bold like this let's delete this border okay perfect so how i'm gonna separate them this rating and those texts it's really easy we have details container here i'm gonna say display flex flex direction column and justify content that's all and for this container i'm gonna align my item to right side so let's come here and choose our container here and i will say text align right and again it's gonna be display flex flex direction gap will be five like that let's handle them quickly what we have we have price here font size 24 and tags option is going to be really small and color will be gray like that and for this button finally and background color will be our blue color you already know what we are gonna do <laughs> front weight bolt padding 10 pixels from top and bottom 5 pixels from left and right and i'm gonna delete border you might say why we are doing same thing again and again that's because i want to teach you how to design a decent website you are right it's a react tutorial but as i said before if you cannot design a nice website nobody cares what you can do in react because if you're a react developer it means you're a front-end developer doesn't matter if you are a full stack or not it's really important guys don't underestimate design part it's really important of course you can create your own components like this button because we are using same background color same font color same border style here okay let's continue i will say cursor pointer and finally border radius okay awesome but there's a problem here that because it's going to infinity <laughs> let's come here and open up list and here as you can see we said sticky but we didn't give any height and it's gonna be maximum content like that 
and right now it's sticky. Perfect, it works. Of course, we are going to handle this search button, but not in design part. It's going to be in the next tutorial. So what we are going to do is creating single hotel page. When we visit any hotel site, let's see what we are going to have. Okay, as you can see, we are going to have some titles here, some texts, booking button, and some images. And finally, description and this box here. And we are going to use our email and footer components. Let me zoom out. It's going to be like that. Okay, let's close everything here. And I'm going to open hotel page. By the way, we don't have CSS, I think. Okay, let's create hotel.css and here. I'm going to close my sidebar. And again, I'm going to add my navbar and header and type will be again list. Let's import them. Import navbar from components, components and navbar and header. Like that. And after that, let's create container, hotel container, hotel wrapper, and first one will be our title. Let's say hotel title, and grand hotel. And we are going to have address container. By the way, let me make this bigger. And here, as you can see, we have icon and text. That's why we have a container here. It's going to be address and first one will be font awesome and icon will be location dot and let's give a span i'm going to give any address here and what else we have as you can see distance and this highlight i think i can copy paste them like that distance and price highlight and finally we are going to have a gallery let's say hotel images and inside we are going to have six images. To do that, I'm going to create here a temporary images array. In the next tutorial, we are going to fetch them from our DB, but for now we can use it. So let's say map and for each image here, I'm going to create hotel image wrapper and inside we are going to have our image, hotel image. And source will be photo and source. Let's see. Okay, they are here. And after that, we are going to have details. It's going to be display flags. And first one will be detail text. And second one will be detail, let's say, price. So I will come here and I'm going to say hotel details. And first one will be hotel details text. And second one will be price. And we are going to have here a title and description. I'm going to copy paste them like that. As you can see, h1 tag, hotel title, and p tag, hotel description. And inside this price, this box, we will have h1 tag, maybe some span here, our price and button. There is nothing important. h1 span h2, and this price will be bold, like here. And finally, a button. Okay, let's give our style. I'm gonna separate this and let's check. Okay, let's quickly take our container here and display flags, justify contact center, and I'm gonna give margin top. Okay, for my wrapper, I'm gonna give minimum width, so they are gonna be centered. Let's take this wrapper. 100% and maximum width will be 1024 and it's going to be display flex flex direction will be column that because as you can see it's vertical but this part will be flex direction row i'm going to give gap and pixels and let's handle this image otherwise we are going to have a problem to see it as you can see we have a wrapper here image wrapper i'm going to say width 33% and for this image 
I'm going to say it 100%. In this case, it's going to cover its wrapper and object it will be, as always, cover. Like that. Let's reduce this title. There is our title here. I'm going to say font size 24. And for this address, font size will be smaller. It's going to be display flex because remember we have an icon inside. I will say align item center and I'm going to give space. Like this. Perfect. What about this distance? Remember it was blue. So I'm going to come here. Color will be light blue and font weight will be 500 like this and this one will be green let's take this here color will be green and again font weight will be 500 okay perfect so what about this color let's come here auto images i'm gonna say display flex but if we do that, they are going to be in the same line. To prevent this, I'm going to say flex wrap. And it's going to be wrap. So they are going to be in this size. And if it's overflowing, our container will move them into another line. Like that. If we say, for example, 23%, as you can see, four images are here and others are here. Okay. Let's give just five content here. So if there is a space between them, it's gonna separate like this. Perfect. By the way, we have a button here, as you can see. Let's create that and we can give position absolute. So I can write it here. After wrapper, I'm gonna say button and book now. And it's gonna be reserve or book now. Okay, let's create this here. After wrapper, I can write it here. It's going to be position absolute. But remember, if you are using absolute, make its parent position relative. And I'm going to give my position. And it's going to be top 10, right 0. Like this. Let's delete this border, give background color, font color, and other things, as we always do. I will say border none. Padding 10 pixels, 20 pixels. I'm gonna give background color. And normal color will be white. I mean font color. And it's gonna be bold. Like this. Let's give cursor pointer and maybe radius here. It's gonna be 5 pixels. And cursor pointer. Okay, perfect. So what about them? I'm gonna make this flex box and give some gap between them. What was the name? Hotel details. Display flex, justify content. And gap will be, let's say 20. Okay, I'm gonna give margin here. Margin top. And let's give width for them. For this part, it's gonna be three units. And this one will be smaller, it's going to be one unit. To do that, I'm going to copy this one. And I will say flex 3. And for other one, what was the name? Details price. It's going to be flex 1. Like this. So let's take care of this description. I will say font size 14. And I'm going to give margin like that. If I zoom out, as you can see, it looks pretty nice. And what about this box? Firstly, I'm going to give a background color. It's going to be this white color. It's close to blue, as you can see, like that. And I'm going to give some padding. And I'm going to make them display flex and flex direction column. Let's give 20 pixels, flex direction, and cap. Okay, nice. But it's really big. 
let's take this wrapper again and i'm gonna choose h1 which is title and it's gonna be a little bit smaller and color will be our gray color five by five like this and for this pen here this one i'm gonna make this span and font size will be 14. let's delete here and for this price let's see it's h2 tag i'm gonna duplicate this and i will say h2 and i'm just gonna decrease its font weight it's gonna be 300. and finally for this button i'll say button and I'm gonna copy paste my style that because we have already done this. It's exactly the same button and it's here. It's this button. Let me zoom out. Okay, perfect. So let's give our mail list a footer. Mail list what was the name let's check okay mail list and uh, footer let's import them i'm gonna close here mail list footer okay there is a problem here that because let's open up Hotel CSS, and as you can see, it's display flex. That's a flex direction. Okay, it's vertical, but since we are using justify content, it centers them vertically. That because we are using column instead of justify content, I'm gonna say align item center. And this time it's gonna be centered. Let's check here, it's exactly the same. But I didn't create any slider here. If you want to, we can create, I don't know, it's pretty big actually, but as a user, probably I want to see them bigger. So when I click them, we are going to see the bigger version. To do that, let's create slider div here. And inside we are going to have, okay, let me design first. Because I didn't create before, it's going to be live. <laughs> okay, we have some images here. When I click on first one, it's gonna open only this image. So we can choose them looking at its index. For example, its index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's gonna open only this one. And inside slider container, we are gonna have two arrows. One of them will be on the left. Second one will be here. And when we click them, we are gonna just change index. Okay, I get it. Let's see, I'm gonna create here a use state, I will say slide number or slide index set slide number use state and it's going to be zero so whenever we click on any image here where is our image here on click event and it's going to update our state and it's going to give here its index by the way we can use its index here and pass it here Okay, slide number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And also, we should open our slider div here, that because it's going to be like a model. So I'm going to create one more use state here. And let's say, open, set, open. At the beginning, it's going to be false. So I'm going to write here my condition. If it's open, we are going to see it. If it's not, it's going to be disappear. So in this case, not only this, we are going to set one more use state. So I'm going to say handle open. Let's come here. I'll say const handle open. And we are going to take its index here and we are going to set it. And after that, we are going to open our model. So I'll say set open It's going to be true. So if I write here something, and if I click, okay, it's here. Perfect. 
So let's create our buttons. I'm going to use font awesome and I'm going to search for arrows. We can use this one or Okay, this is better writing, left, right, and we are going to have close button, exit button. Okay, this one is good, circle, X, mark. So let's import them. Font awesome icon, and icon will be circle, X, mark. Okay, this one I think. Circle, arrow, left and right okay and it's gonna be position absolute don't worry about this and between left and right arrow I'm gonna create slider wrapper and inside we are gonna have our image slider image and its source will be photos and which item is gonna be it's gonna be slide number so when I click the first one, it's going to be photo zero and it's going to show the first item. Let's try. I'm clicking here. Ah, I forgot source. Okay, something is wrong. Let's see here. Okay, it cannot find source. Let's see here. Handle open, of course. <laughs> we didn't give our index. Like that. I'm gonna close here and let's try again. Okay, perfect. When I click this one, it's gonna open the first one. Awesome. So let's take care about them. I'm gonna open my CSS file, hotel.css. I'm gonna take this here and let's come here. I'm gonna say slider. It's gonna be full screen and it's gonna be, let's say, sticky. So even if we scroll, it's going to be stay there. So I will say top zero, left zero. That because it's going to be full screen. Height 100 VH, like that. Let's say background color. Okay. But our items are still here. Let's say Z index 999. Okay, perfect. I'm scrolling and it's still here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this background color. It's gonna be black, but we are gonna reduce the opacity. Let's say, actually it's here. I'll say black and let's say something like that. And I'm gonna align everything, align item center. And for the wrapper, slider wrapper, I'm gonna say, with 100%, hide 100%, in this case it's gonna be full screen also. And I'm gonna center my image. Just by content center, align item center. Okay, let's give it for our image, slider image. Let's say 80%, like that. As you can see, our background is much better right now. Maybe let's reduce height, ATVH. Okay, perfect. It's better than I thought. And I'm gonna put this cancel button somewhere here. Let's give class name for this. I'm gonna say class name is gonna be close. And for right and left arrows, I'm gonna say arrow and again okay let's take this and it's gonna be position absolute and let's give top 20 right 20 somewhere here and I'm gonna increase maybe 30 okay actually it's nice maybe color white or maybe gray let's say light gray okay and i'm gonna make this cursor pointer and when i click this button i'm gonna close my model 
So I'm going to say on click event and set open is going to be false. Let's try. I'm clicking and it's gone. Let's open this bathroom. I'm clicking. It's here. It's gone. Perfect. So what about those arrows? Arrow, I'm going to say give some margin like that and font size again 30 or maybe bigger okay perfect and again it's gonna be light gray and pointer like that so what i'm gonna do is when i click this button i'm gonna decrease my slide number and when i click this one i'm gonna increase my slide number but there's a problem here if it's the first item when I click again, it's going to be minus one. I should prevent this. So let's handle that. I'm going to take those arrows and on click method, let's give arrow function that because we are going to give parameter. So I will say handle, let's say move. And this is going to be left. This is going to be right. Let's create this. const handle move is going to take direction and I'm going to decide a new slide number let's say new slide number or index and I'm going to write here my condition if direction is left side I'm going to decrease number if it's one it's going to be zero but if it's zero, it's not going to be minus one. It's going to be five. That's because we have six items and last index will be five. So I'm going to say new slider number. And we are going to check our actual slide number. And if it's zero, it's going to be five. If it's not zero, it's going to be slide number minus one. So I'm going to do the same thing for the right side. So I will say else if slide number is five, it means we are in the last image. So in this case, it's going to be zero. If it's not, we are going to increase this. It's that easy. And finally, I'm going to update my state, set slide number, and it's going to be new slide number. I hope everything is okay. I'm clicking. Oh, okay, it works. Perfect. So I'm going to close here. So let's choose this image. Okay, it's opening what we want. So it's going to go to bathroom if I click here. Okay, perfect. And it's going to come back. Awesome. So it works. And we finished our UI design. Don't forget, in the next tutorial, we are going to create our backend. By the way, let me know in the comments. Do you want to create a backend using Node.js and MongoDB or Firebase? I'm going to read them and in the next week we are going to create our DB and we are going to fetch all those items using our backend server. And that's all. I hope you liked it. If you learned something new today, please like the video. If you want to support LamaDev, you can use the link in the description below or you can join the channel. And don't forget to follow LamaDev social media accounts. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.